Okay, so once saved, always saved, does not exist. It is not real as long as you are in a carnal human fleshly form vessel breathing on this planet. When you pass away and you get a glorified body and is in perpetual, perpetual glory forever with the Lord, once saved, always saved, reigns true, it is real, it exists, it's legitimate, it's official because you have made it to glory to be forever saved. But right now, you are not safe in order to be safe because on earth we got a pesky opponent called the devil trying to deter, stop, hinder your glory destination constantly because he absolutely does not want you going there to the point of your own extreme detriment. If one saved, always saved is true, why are there things required for believers to do in the Bible? Like apply the full arm of God, pray spiritual war warfare. Fast, follow the commandments, be holy. Why would we have to do any of these things if once saved, always saved was legit? Uh, we can just sit back and relax and wait for the Lord to gather us all up, which is essentially what once saved, always saved does and believe. And it's, it's a false doctrine that is not of the Bible, but straight from the pits of hell designed to get you to hell. But in Revelation 3.16, Jesus says, if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out. But to once saved, always saved believers, they say and use, they were never saved to begin with. But why would Jesus say, I will spit out a lukewarm? When we already know many times from the Bible where unbelievers go, uh, they're not even of God. But Jesus says, I will spit you out of my mouth because he is talking about those who profess to be of him, but have fallen away. Uh, they are they are in his mouth, but because uh, because they are in, they are of him. and But they have turned sour and nasty. Therefore, he spits them out. And do you think the great falling away when it happens, those people will go to heaven because... They would have to be in faith to believe in faith in order to fall from it. But no, a once saved, always saved believer will say they are not saved to begin with. Despite the fact that people uh, like myself and others who are trying to get people to that realization uh, with the power and strength of the Holy Spirit in us right now so that people won't fall away in the future. While the majority could care less waiting for their rapture rocket to take them on out of here. But digressing, the great falling away is for people uh, who who will profess to be Christian, but turn away from God because, uh, that actually exists in the Bible. The Bible speaks to people like that, uh, who once saved, always saved, say we're not saved to begin with, but they were, it's just that the devil won over them to cause them to fall away to their flesh, to sin. And Jesus will spit out a lukewarm tells us that, that there will be Christians but they're serving two masters. They, they serve Jesus, but they also serve themselves and, and their sin or things of this world. Uh, but we cannot do that because the Bible says we are enemies of our Lord if we do that. And it won't work because we don't go to jail. We don't collect $200. We go straight to hell. We have to have full allegiance, loyalty, and devotion in serving Jesus only. You cannot dibble and dabble into serving other things and something else, putting your fleshy ways, interests, desires, and likes, whatever, at no percentage uh, while serving Jesus, uh, while professing to follow Jesus or to be Christian, because we are human, flawed, weak vessels, and the devil knows this. That's why you can bet the cows and chickens he is going to try you day and night until you finally get to heaven or get to hell. Personally, for him, he's banking on hell with everything he's got to come at you and throw at you in order to get you there instead. And that's why I want to say, I always say this a lie until you get off this planet and into glory in a, in a glorified body. People think it's, it's once saved, always saved, but you're not. You're not saved. That's why Jesus tells us to daily pick up our cross, deny our flesh, because it's not over. It's not saved. We're not fully saved until we are in glory. Because now the fight begins for every new believer walking seriously with Christ, but up against an enemy coming at us from every direction, trying to take us off the path of righteousness so we can belong to the kingdom of darkness instead with him for all eternity. And the reason I'm speaking on this is because a pastor, which bothers me completely to call him that, who is a once saved, always saved believer, says that no one can do Matthew 22, 37, which is love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. No one can do Matthew 19, 19, which is love thy neighbor as thyself. And I can't believe he actually spoke, spoke that. So you, you can't or you won't do what is commanded by you, by Jesus himself. But he believes he's sealed. And he's, he, he will still go to heaven, yet he don't even go by what Jesus tells us to do. He says we can't even do what Jesus tells us to do. That is one of the most gross, insane things I've ever heard from a pastor. I'm not even going to give his info because your blood, listening to him, possibly following him, will not be on my hands. But brothers and sisters, you cannot disobey the Lord and think you are safe, sealed, raptured, whatever. That's why that doctrine, I can't stand it. It corrupts the minds away from the Lord. 
uh, they are team Satan and they don't even know it. They are fall. They are the falling away because they're not strong in the Lord. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They're not following the Lord. They don't obey the Lord. But to them or this pastor, nothing can take away their salvation. Despite him saying there's no way in his mind, he can do what Jesus tells us to do. And by him saying that 10 times out of 10, he is not obeying Christ. He's not of the spirit, but uh, to him, he's sealed and going to heaven. These people are in for the rudest awakening. They have no idea. And for someone who lives by the Bible, who isn't a part of any denomination any longer, to fully practice and be taught in the way of the Bible and not man-made doctrine, this is grievous to me. But imagine what our Lord and Savior must go through, dealing with this day in and day out for thousands of years. This is why we should follow the Ten Commandments, because the Lord our God is most long-suffering to our deceit and foolishness and rebellion and sin, and us doing what we want to do, which is a slap in the face most of the times to Him. But He... He is he is long suffering and merciful and 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 kind and he just loves us so much. Uh, if he didn't, we would we we would all be burning right now. That alone should make us want to completely sell out for Jesus Christ and completely strive to follow every commandment he spoke of us to practice and do in our own lives. That much more in love and complete obedience to him. But he has to deal with his children who don't love him, who don't love him enough, who mock him, who sin against him, who do evil against him. And I was once guilty of that. I hate that old creature that I was who was against the Lord all the time because I did things my way. So right now, just hearing someone else kind of speak like that, you know, I, I know they're not fully in Christ. I know they're lukewarm. But just imagine what, what Jesus is going through and what he has been going through. And maybe it could be because I have got a, I got a taste of hell to receive a second chance, and they haven't. But I can't imagine what the Lord goes through dealing with his people who don't love him, who, who don't follow him, who believe they don't have to, who believe they can't. You know, it's because the enemy has gotten in their ears and told them a lot that they believe. The Lord to God, our, our, our Lord is very long-suffering to all of us to keep putting up with our rebellion, our sin, and doing us and doing what we want to do instead of what he wants us to do uh in our lives because he he still wants us to finally come to that point where we truly turn to him love him come to him in forgiveness so he can forgive us and show us the way we should go but many of us act like we don't even need him and if you can't completely follow the commandments you need jesus if you have anger heart uh anger in your heart hate in your heart if, or if you're struggling with anything if you can't be complete completely obedient to what jesus is telling you to do you need jesus you need jesus if jesus can take away sin or strong bondages or or chains he can make he can give you a heart that's completely completely devoted and, and sold out for him and following him he can do that i speak personally from that so guys judgment Judgment is coming, and many will not know what they can't see, feel, think, hear, believe now. But please, for anybody watching this, get out of one saved, always saved. It's a lie, and it's designed to take you to hell. Until next video, God bless.